Uh, I would like to, um, to, to, to make a statement um, to help the brother um, on tu intuition. In our legacy, there's a name for intuition. The name for intuition in our legacy is called Ampu. Ampu. That's right, bro. The jackal. And see, the story says that when Ast and in Bethlehem, the two sisters cooperated with each other, they were fighting each other. Teach, bro. And when they went looking for the bodies, the pieces, they took Ampu. Because Ampu is the one who is. That don't sound like it. Right. That don't look like it. That's the, that's the principle of tuition within every human being. And it's called This is my mother's legacy. I'm her one begotten son. Blew her fire in my lungs in nine months. It was done. That's the short version. Let me take you past hell to the light at the end of this uncertain tale. They try to back me up, lose me, lock me up in mental jail. So by the age of 12, I realized I couldn't fail. Cause the soul is much deeper than this empty shell. Every lesson my mama taught me, I'm sure I learned them well. Indeed, she's my eyes and her wings gave me life and the mental ability to separate wrong from right. And the word sutek later on derives the smell kesudek. And male kesudek, that's where you get the word male on the beginning, on the beginning of male kesudek means melanin. Melanin comes from an ancient Greek god called Melini or something like that, where they got it from. All these are terms of where they get the word melanin from. Ancient Greek god. Because the original Greek were black. They were called the Etruscans. The Etruscans. You see what I'm saying? The Etruscans. And the Greek language is a black language. How in the hell can the white man develop an advanced language like the Greek language? It's one of the most beautiful languages in the world. When he couldn't speak, oh, 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 come out of the cave. <laughs> now, here go a could come from not speaking. We had to teach him how to speak. Now, phony, ruins of the empire. We had to teach him how to speak, but yet he could come up with the Greek language. The Greeks were the, the original Greeks were black, the Etruscans. The Europeans, it's, it's, it's a classic example. The Europeans came in, took over the land, and took the culture. See what I'm saying? But the Greek religion, the Greek gods, the Greek, the Greek gods, the Greek language, and all that come from the Etruscans. Plato, Socrates, and all those were black people. They were the original Etruscans, and the Etruscans used to be the original Greeks and the Greeks original Romans. <clears throat> that's what the, that, and that's what the whole thing on the Greek thing is. You see, that's what that's what that's talking about. Now, let's get into some more things here. Uh, let's see what we're gonna deal with right now. Uh, Y'all all right? Okay. Uh, Let's deal with something right here. Let's see if I want to use any of these. Let's get into a little bit of sex tantrum first. These are some things that you need to be doing. Sex is good. Lust is good. Everything that the people tell you, the Bible tell you not to do, you're supposed to be doing. Because the Bible was a book that was put together for slavery, although the scriptures come out of ancient fragments, but the way the Bible is administered to you is put together to keep you in slavery. Moral doctrine. You don't need moral doctrine. It don't matter what you do, you still will make it. You, you don't have nothing to do with good behavior at all. That's for somebody else. I'll explain that when we get deeper into this particular thing. Sex tantrum. You need to be focusing on the chakras when you have sex. Different, there's different parts of sex tantrum. The book you want to get is The Ecstasy, one of the best ones that show these pictures here, great pictures. They are coming from a book called The Ecstasy Through Tantra by Dr. John Mumford. Dr. John Mumford. Ecstasy Through, Ecstasy Through Tantra by Dr. John Mumford. You see what I'm saying? Dr. John Mumford. That's the one you want to get. Uh, sex Tantra. These are things you can do. Imagination. You imagine the kundalini, imagine you're both snakes intertwining. This is sex tantra. This is things you need to be doing. Powerful sex tantra. Sex is good. That's why the white boy outlawed it by inventing AIDS to keep you from engaging in the sex to raise your spiritual energy. Lust is good. If you ever, if you ever, if you ever, 
if you ever want to raise the spiritual energy up in you, think of something erotic that turn you on, and then meditate, and it raises the spiritual energy. You see what I'm saying? That's what it is. That's, that's what the spirit is. What, what does the spirit feel like? The spirit feels like when you get in that nut, you this pressure. You know what I'm talking about. That climax, that's when you get in the, the most part of what your spirit feels like. Now imagine feeling like, you know how a climax feels. Imagine like, say, I'm going I'm to feel like that for damn 10 years. <laughs> Take that up. That's the stuff that I'm going to get to. When you get rid of the physical body who cut what cuts that off. So are you talking about here? You want to be in practice until getting ready for a partner until you get it. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> Had a friend named Sergeant Slaughter. He was in his damn late 60s. He was killing these. He, he just got to say he was killing these 19, 20 year old girls. I'm like, man, how the hell do you do that? He said, I'd be rolling. <laughs> hell, man, he and that nigga going to 70. He was rocking the ass. <laughs> the mom's calling on the damn phone and stuff. I said, hell, man. He said, I never stop using it, man. When you stop using it, that's when you lose it. It's a muscle. It's like anything else. You stop exercising, you stop deteriorating. He said, I never stop, so I'm rolling them. I had another guy, this guy about 90 years old. He was about, we think he was 90, Dr. Evos. He was a metaphysical healer. He was about 90 years old. He had a girl in Brazil that was 20, he said. He said, I wear out. She ain't enough for me. <laughs> He said, I, he said, you know, I learned, but he was a medical, this guy was a man. He said he'd been in Tibet. He saw women in Tibet that could have a baby at 70, drop a baby like they, like, 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 like they shit. Just drop a baby, boom. No problem. Like going to the bathroom. 70 years old. You see what I'm saying? They talking about you can't have a baby past one. No, no, that's white people. And that's the stuff with us based on this particular climate. But you in your right environment, they have these people with dropping babies at 70. 70 year old women have a baby. See what I'm saying? For a 70 year old man, he's giving them to him. See what I'm saying? You know that guy, Hotima. Hilton Hotima, you ever get in his books, The Mistress yeah. of Sex? Yeah. Hotima, from Health Research, out in California, deal with all that type of stuff. You see what I'm saying? Deal with that type of stuff. Very key that you understand that at this particular time. Now, let's get into some other stuff. Let's see where, where we're heading here. Got a lot more to deal with here. 
We get into the hell box. Let me see what I got here in the books here. We're gonna get into. I think I'm gonna go into some. I'm gonna go into some, 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 some great old ones first. Then we gonna go into some hell box. Y'all all right? No, we gonna no, we gonna go into no. We got some other stuff. Hell box is just, 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 just a, uh, one part of. We got some good stuff here. Yeah. Let's deal with some stuff here. Uh, this is coming from the Necronomicon. This is prehistory. This is prehistory. This is stuff, now see. Otherwise, you love trash. Yeah. What happened was, is this is stuff that coming from the British Museum. Ancient fragments is in a certain Arabic writing that they couldn't even translate. They had to come and find, they had to go to, to, to Arabia and find out from one of the old Kushite families to translate this stuff. Form and stuff. Now this is what the deal is here. This is this is the actual ancient fragments from the British Museum that gives a history that goes back something like two billion years old. And that goes COVID, and the only person ever talked about this was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the black man is 66 trillion years old. This history goes back to two billion years when we and wasn't no damn Piltdown man and no Gamali man. And see, see, that's the thing about the, the, the Afrocentric scholars, because they were trained into the universities, they bought that shit. That Charles Smith thing would be coming from goddamn Marcus. <laughs> that was a cracker which we made into that. We can get into that tonight too. But we were always gods here. And two million years ago, we was on the planet. And they had another race of people on the planets. They were dinosaurs, the highly intelligent people. But they were mostly into the physical realm, and we was in the spiritual realm, and we lived simultaneously. But what happened was, is our vibration started declining. We realized that two of these particular entities couldn't occupy the same space. Since we were the gods, we blew them up. Now, Richard Hoagland from doggone the NASA man who wrote the monuments on Mars say that they just found dinosaur bones this year and they had radioactive in them. Radioactive uh, uh, type of element to them where they were blew up. So we, ex we, we exterminated them when we were going back, going closer to the physical realm. We exterminated those particular people because two people couldn't occupy the same space. But they were, uh, they were a, an advanced uh, type of people. But we're talking about two million years ago and I'm getting ready to read some of that history right now. The two billion year old stuff and all. Uh, two billion years old, based on the fragments coming from the British Museum. And yet they'll come and get, they'll, they purposely put the stuff in the libraries and stuff, stuff in the books. And Dr. Ben and all of them thought that they was getting the real knowledge. They were only getting a fragment of the real knowledge from, from a last, last part of the 26,000 year period of ancient Egypt, which was the fallen part, which is only the leftover ancient Atlantis. You see what I'm saying? Oh, so they're all the black scholars, now they get mad. They're talking about Atlantis. Look, we got big egos. And what happened is we, we gave the black scholars too many birthday parties, too much stuff, because we like to follow people. Our illustrious scholars. So they gave you the information of a earlier part of history, earlier than Greece and Rome, but a late part of history when it comes to our history on the earth for two billion years. Now the new metaphysical history doesn't hit the pipe. And just like anybody with an ego, if you become, if you're the number one scholar, and everybody's saying that you're the number one, you got the end all and be all. And then somebody else come with other doctrines that even go beyond that, which your stuff is supposed to be a progression. You open the door for later research. And when the other people come now, no, nah, that's some bullshit by the Lancers and Lemuria, because you know that you number one at what you talk about, and like anybody become number one, you don't, you feel inferior to another knowledge that you don't know nothing about. Mm -hmm. And I'll challenge them in a doggone minute. So they laughed at Arm Elijah Muhammad when he talked about the white man was the devil. I introduced evidence, tell you that the white man was the devil off the Egyptian, of the temple walls right. of Seti One. And in, in Heratical Pines of the British Museum, which I got it right here that I stole from memory. I'll read the shit to you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, he says 66 trillion years, people laugh. Now, this is stuff coming from England on that. Now, it says, in here when you see Cthulhu, that's actually Osiris. Uh, 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 it says, records of Cthulhu's origin is fragmentary, but it seems to originate in the world of Vuru, which is just another name for Sirius, in the 23rd Nebula. Now, he later traveled 
to the green double star ox and made it with a creature called Abathar and created the great old ones. Basically, these are mythological terms that's talking about Isis and Osiris, Sirius, Pleiades, Orion. Take your pick. The race of beings known as Cthulhu then flew to Saturn and from Saturn to Earth. Now, upon the arrival to Earth, the great Osiris, or Cthulhu, Cthulhu, and his routine took up residence on the continent of the Pacific Ocean, where they built the great stone city of Rayleigh. That's the first part of Lemuria and Atlantis, because all the Earth at one time was one landmass. The crack on During the millions of years, humanity slowly evolved. And what does that mean? I thought Cthulhu, what are we? That means the physical body that we had slowly crept on us because the dimension, the, 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 the dimension slowed down and we, be, and we became more physical. We were spiritual then. That's what we're going back to. You see, slowly evolved. Cthulhu and them spoke of these new beings through telepathy, which means when the physical realm came into existence and we developed physical bodies, we spoke to the physical bodies from inside out, which you're supposed to be doing now. It's the same body, but we were highly psychic beings. You understand where I'm coming from? It's the way you read this stuff to understand the metaphysics. Uh, the, 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 the metaphysics. Now, it says they brought statues and stone images from the stars and instructed them in the proper worship of Rayleigh. But we built statues to remind ourselves of what we used to be when we used to be gods that is now resting on the inside of us. You get it? We used to be spirits, highly, highly evolved spirits. The vibration slowed down and we became encased in physical bodies. And we became drunk to the physical body thinking that the physical body was us, but we were actually on the inside. So as a result, we built statues, we built scriptures, and we built monuments to remind us that this is not us because we are on the inside. And this is where the cults came where as far as the mystery systems to teach us that it's inwardly. And we are drunk to the physical appearances around us. You got it? Got it. That's what's going on here. The following, okay, now, okay, now, doing this now, let's, let's deal with this thing here, look. One day, disaster struck. Rayleigh may be, uh, it says, Rayleigh must have, must, may have been ventured with unknown deities changed in the stars and the moon being separated from the earth. I don't know why talking about the moon separated from the earth. Through the ev evidence suggested this, uh, the followers of Cthulhu uh, had a hand in this. What it means is this here. It means that also, when, the, when, when everything fell down, we actually fell to the lowest particular possible part. And it said, water blocked the, telepathic, the, 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 the telepathic signals, making them unable to communicate with their worshipers through dreams. That talk about we're falling more and more into the particular physical state. It says, but one day, it says one day, the, the, the Cthulhu and them will awaken and destroy across the world and usher in a new age. You are awakening right now because now you are even deep. For the mere fact that we are up in here talking about advanced knowledge, yet 10 or 15 years ago, it would be like you coming up in here and I'm talking, and I'm talking some Bug Bunny, Bug Bunny shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It would have been some real strange stuff. Now it's food for thought. Not only that, you find answers within the most strange stuff. Seems like the only stuff that you can adhere to because you get stagnant in the stuff that you already know. That's what knowledge is. If somebody telling you something that you already know, then it's not knowledge anymore. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? So, when you go to a church and you go amen, he's cheating you. You're supposed to be going, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> not amen. If you agree with the stuff, you already know that. Why go spend money and pay a goddamn nigga to teach you? Something that you already know. That's called religious ceremony. It has nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. You understand what I'm saying? Some of the most awful people in our community is the black preacher. Uh -oh. they, they are some of the lowest swine we got. <laughs> now, if you are preaching and you are a righteous person, you don't adhere to this. For the people in here, I don't want to offend anybody who's trying to get the real knowledge. 
Well, let me tell you something about a preacher that's no good. These preachers can learn the knowledge and know it and will still go back and teach up in that church and lie to their people when they know that that shit is fake. And keep them ignorant. That's one of the worst. That's worse than the cracker. That's one of the worst person. Anybody that hold back knowledge is worse than the damn beast. Because that's his nature to be the devil. Some of these preachers are some of the lowest things you're going to find. You see what I'm saying? I actually start to have a detestation for them. Because I know people, I know brothers and sisters, I know some preachers that was in on the knowledge learning with me. Then mm -hmm. went to dog on theology school after all that knowledge we done learned together. And now they're teaching someplace. Putting that dog on poison in the people's mind. Mm -hmm. Calling themselves wretches. A wretch like me. Right there, that's a self-defeatist thing. A wretch like me. You understand what I'm saying? What kind of junk is that? This is, I'm telling you, some of the worst people we got now. That's why there's a church on every corner. It's a government sting operation. You got a dog on to get out of this, you got a dog on to bear witness to the truth. And you know I'm telling the truth, too. Plus, also, too, you know there's something wrong with us. Don't you know sometimes the holy sanctified people come around you and you get a bad feeling? Yeah. You ever know that? that? Yeah. You don't know what the hell it is. That's the spirit telling you that that particular person there is bogged down into something that's evil. You see what I'm saying? That's evil. Everything is different. Sometimes you can go behind, you can go around an old drunk. Other than him annoying you, he tell a few wow. jokes and you you laugh and stuff. And sometimes it's cool to just be around common folks and just cut the food. It's a relief. That's because that brother's spirit is more freer than a person to walk around all snubbed in a damn suit. And I, oh, all right, this. I hate that stuff. I'm telling you. I don't like preachers now. I'm, I'm starting to have a dog on detestation for this. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Let's not be hypocrites. You want to learn knowledge and stuff, you got to understand and accept what's coming down the pipe. You are... You have been blessed to be privy to understand what's going on while your people are still stuck. But you got to listen to what the Spirit tells you. The Spirit been telling you, I don't like them people. Damn Jehovah Witness knocking on your door. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And it's not just the Holy Spirit. It's the big, the big time wheel in dealing preachers. They ain't nothing. They swine. That's the enemy. I'm telling you. Or you say they mean good. No, no, there's plenty of good black people, so-called good black people, just ignorant, good black people. That's right. But they do more harm than anything by their ignorance. And you know for a fact, every movement we had that was positive was broken by the black church. Because right. the black church is a government staying operation, and one of, the, one of the chief government operators, one of the greatest agents in the United States government history, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was a government agent, a Negro boule that was put in to counter Amalaj Muhammad and Nova Drew Ali's movement because Malcolm X had come up at the particular time and he was a, the Malcolm X was speaking and he could get to the youth. That's what it was. And when Malcolm X came up and all, as a result, they came out with their rendition to a younger preacher, Martin Luther King. Remember, the original civil rights movement was started by Adam Clayton Powell. Right. Who knew some Bow Dunn? His family, you know, that, that New York thing and that Caribbean thing and all them people in Harlem, he knew some shit. He had it going on. He had it going on. You see what I'm saying? He knew some stuff. The real one was started by him. That's why he hated Martin Luther King. Because it was a government st sting operation. Martin Luther King came up in there. Even the people, some of the original People that was in the doggone civil rights movement say, man, if we would have known you was pushing for integration, we never would have done this shit. See what I'm saying? There was a spiritual woman that knew that Martin Luther King was a fake. She was a spiritual seer and advanced being, and she looked at him, she said, this man is a government agent going to sell out our people. So she stabbed that nigga ass. Remember that? She yanked that nigga. Remember that? She shanked him. Remember he got stabbed? That's because the woman was a spiritual seer. And she could see that this man was a doggone devil in disguise, a government agent. And they around. You see? See what happened is, let's break it through the history of this. What happened was this. They had the uprising of British rule India. 
you had your yogic system, you understand, and your spiritual system. <coughs> so they had a government sting operation to put in Gandhi, who was a government agent for the British intelligence. Gandhi came in and gave a nonviolent movement, and the British was able to get out of India without no bloodshed, based on Gandhi. As a result, they developed a mass COINTELPRO government system to quail black rebellious organizations and world uprisings by the nonviolent change. So when they came in with the Spin Guard Brothers and the whole particular CIA and FBI and all them, they inducted Martin Luther King and they gave him his script to go by. Gandhi's nonviolent social change. And this is the government movement that broke the back of the people to this day. We suffering by some shit with Martin Luther King. Every time the cracker, anytime you go up with the cracker right now, and you start talking since he put that Martin Luther King stuff in your face. As a result of the greatest government agent in the world, one of the most racist president honored him with a birthday in 1995-96, signing his bill into doggone Congress as a job well done. You don't get a birthday not unless you are a government agent. And as a celebration of him being the most successful government agent in the world, he got a birthday. You see what I'm saying? James L. Ray did not get a trial because Coretta Scott King and them, he's supposed to get a trial. But why didn't Coretta Scott King and them sellout niggas didn't get a man a trial? And they so-called love Martin. Because the president, because the government stepped to Coretta Scott King and dropped off some pictures of Martin Luther King screwing some damn white women in. White women. White women. And they said, we're going to put this shit out here if you give a dog on trial to James Earl Ray. And they quail that stuff. Now the government is coming back saying, now we use stuff now to get black people off the track. So now they'll come out with this stuff here just to get you off the track. And you think, Lord, it's free. We be getting free now. There's truth coming out with Mark and the And that's the government shit to lead you astray. To lead you astray. And that boy up there, he been dead. That's a damn robot. His son, the daughters, and all of them, including the mama. Straight up robot. They didn't kill them. They dead. Because it's the new shit. This is some real deal stuff. And you can take it or let it alone. But you might as well believe me, because guess what? <laughs> I ain't here trying to get no followers. <laughs> I ain't here trying to get no followers whatsoever. I'm just giving you the, the knowledge. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get no followers. I ain't trying to start no classes. And I ain't trying to sell you no doggone products. <laughs> Who are you going to believe? And I ain't telling you I'm the Messiah. We can't do nothing to help our people. You understand what I'm saying? Check. Check. All right. So, that, so, so this, I'm telling you, it's something else. Y'all all right? Yeah. yeah, let's go on. I want to get into some other stuff here now. I want to get into some other stuff because we got to smash a certain amount of things. You can always get into stuff because I can always come back, but we got to smash some things here first of all. How old is that writing up on that picture? They don't even know. It goes, it's, well, this one here is an a Arabic here. That's a couple of thousand years old, but the history that it gives is very old. It's very old. They don't even know. You got uh, uh, how old um, that particular writing is, but uh, it's not as old as the history that is given, but it's very old. It's older than the other Arabic <coughs> because they had to even go to find a base family, go and find a black Kushite family to translate it. You understand what I'm saying? To, to translate it. Now, I told you at the beginning of the movie. I told you, excuse me. I told you at the beginning of the of the lecture that. Um, there's esoteric knowledge and exoteric knowledge. Let me give you a bit of a history on what happened. Let me run this thing down to you so you can understand history. Now, you've got to follow this history because i got to set it all up. I'm going to show you the greatest hopes of the world. Like John, John, John Henry Clark said, the greatest hopes in the world, the greatest fraud in the world, Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. 
Let me go into this thing right now. We're going to set this thing up for you. You had the ancient Egyptian mystery system, ancient Camite mystery system, ancient Sufi mystery system, ancient Kabbalistic mystery system, and all of them dealt with alchemy. And alchemy became the art of Hermes, the Hermetics. Alchemy, the transformation of the soul, the mystery of melanin. The alchemy is the study of melanin. <coughs> From the ancient Egyptian mystery system, you get the Hermetic system, and then after the priesthood started breaking down, the Egyptian priests came and translated stuff into a common language called Coptic. And Coptic is later day Egyptian, a Camite, Coptic language. So they took the ancient Egyptian mystery system stuff and translated it into Coptic. When the Alexandrian age came, the Greeks wrestled this Coptic information out of the library of Alexandria and out of the ancient mystery system, this Coptic language <coughs> of the ancient script called Gnosticism, Gnosis, which means divine knowing, Gnosis, knowledge. Just means knowledge. You get the word Gnosticism. They smuggled the Gnosticism text out of Egypt, known as the Hermetic text, the Neoplatonism and Gnosticism, which is Coptic, Valentinian, um, Sethian, and different types of Gnostic materials. After Rome fell, Rome became, excuse me, after Greece fell, um, fell, because the Greeks smuggled this particular information out of Egypt. After Greece fell, Rome became the custodians of the Gnostic material. The Hebrews, had the Kabbalistic material, but had a firm foothold on the religion at that time because the Greeks were gone at the time, so they lost the religion that they had accommodated themselves in the religion that they learned or the mystery system that they learned out of Egypt. So the Greeks became the custodian of rooms and rooms of papyruses of Gnostic scriptures that was left over by the Greeks, which the Greeks got from Egypt. But it was not in Melanetta at this time because the Egyptian priests put it in their later language called Coptic. The Hebrews were very advanced and based on their particular priesthood, the Kabbalistic priesthood, <coughs> they were able to rise in power based on their religion, hard to oppress a historically religious people, or spiritual people, mystical people, not religious, because the stuff we got now is for world domination. You see what I'm saying? Mm. World domination. You got the Pope in Rome, he runs the Christian and the Catholic side of it. You got Tel Aviv, which is Israel, they run the Jewish side of it. And then you got the white Arab in Mecca, they run the Islamic side of it, and they divide up the whole world and control in the world with a religious entity, which is world domination, male chauvinist murder cults. Now, so the, so the Romans started going into an extinction because they could not hold Rome together because they did not have a mythology. <coughs> the mythology of Romulus and Remus started dying out, which is the original Roman mythology. So as a result, the Romans say we must get our mythology compatible to the Jews. So as a result, they had thousands and thousands of rolls of this papyrus that was left behind from the Greeks. They conquered the Greeks, so they, cut, they get the material that was conquered from the Greeks. The Greeks got it from the Egyptians. It's Egyptian, Camite in origin, and e Atlantean, so on and so forth. On, it goes on back. Goes right off the planet. You see what I'm saying? Now, they come in, they get writers to deflect to their side. They get Jewish writers that can translate Coptic, like Josephus, who in actuality, they're saying it was a doggone Roman. An advanced Roman scholar. They got Paul, and they got a group of people to defect, because the Romans were dumbass 
attacks people. They couldn't do but one thing, kill people. That's what the world was. <laughs> so they got Hebrew scholars to the effect over their side and take the Gnostic scriptures and say, take the Gnostic scriptures, which was all talking about a historical Messiah now, and to write a history of a Messiah 2,000 years ago that never existed. That's just, a, that's just a magnificent story gone bad. Now, Ishaq Abus and the rest of them, they still adhere to that because the stuff that they're dealing with is just thousands of biblical literature from Rome on up. Now, how in the hell you got people that's older than the Christians at that time? Then if you go to Egypt, you got Heru, the Messiah. If you go to Persia, you got Mithra, the Messiah. You see what I'm saying? If you go around the world, you got the same Messiah that is supposed to come in the end days. You understand what I'm saying? It's supposed to come at the end of the world. That you, you, you don't find no ancient mythology where they talk about a Messiah that was supposed to come at the end of the world that comes, you understand what I'm saying, and get killed on the cross, but got to come again. See what I'm saying? They're talking about the Osirian resurrection and the Osirian drama of the fall of the black man and black woman. Let's deal with this thing here. So it gets a little scarier than that. So, they come and they get these scholars and they make what is called mystical, a myth, a mythology that transcend time that is talking about eschatology and apocalyptic, which is talking about end time. They didn't write history. As what you think. They were historians, but they didn't write history as well as you can go to the Bible and have a history book. Never use the Bible as a history book. It's historically inadequate. You know that. But it was mythology. You go to Greece, they got Apollo. They got Perseus. They got Jason. They got Hercules, which is all the Christ figures. You got Zeus, which is Osiris, which is the God. See what I'm saying? But the Romans historicalized that which wasn't, wasn't supposed to be historical. The great writer Alvin Boyd Kuhn got an article called uh, Sublime Mythology Makes Grotesque History. Where they took something and they, they took a story that was a couple of thousand years old that was told over and over and over again about the end times. They put the monopoly on it by historicalizing it of a person 2,000 years ago that didn't exist. Now, yes, you were being Pandora, what they have done is they have gone back and looked for a historical figure that they say might fit the description of Jesus. And the revolutionary Jesuit of Ben Pandera is who they say might fit it, but they never, ever talks about a historical Jesus. First of all, we got to look at this, too. The ancient people documented everything they did, and you can go to temple walls and see them yourself. Why is it you go to Jerusalem and you can't find shit? A little old wall, a little old wedding wall. You don't find nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Because the Messiah was supposed to come in these days. I want to ask you a question. How is it this so-called Jesus was supposed to be a Jew, but yet you can't get a Jew to ever bear witness of no 2,000-year Messiah? They don't even believe in that mess. Now, it seems to me if these are... It seems to me... If we talk about, because they just follow the black Jews, if we talk about people that rejected the stuff, I say, if hell, if they say the Messiah is Jewish, then people ought to know enough about their religion to know that ain't no Jesus ever existed back then. You understand what I'm saying? They knew better. That was the Roman invention. That's why the Pope becomes the main figure in Europe dominating Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? If Jesus is a black man that lived 2,000 years ago was hung on the cross, 
Why can't you find no niggas nowhere in world history to tell you that shit? Exactly. It's always white people. Deal with it. Wait a minute, now let's think about this. If there was a black man that died on a cross 2,000 years ago, why can't you find some leftover black culture that will bear witness to that bull job? Why is it always white people telling you that shit? <coughs> That's because it was a Roman invention. They had to invent a messiah for them. And they monopolized on the world black messiah who is to come by making a white one who came 2,000 years ago that didn't exist. Now let's go into some other history. Let's see what this Gnosticism is. This Gnosticism is original Christianity. It's esoteric Christianity. What they did is they took a people's religion that was still living, called the Gnostics. Let me show you how they do this. You ever see TV shows where a guy got an invention? Other guy come in and shoot this guy in the head and steal his invention and put his name on it? Change it around to fit his culture or fit his little thing? Plagiarize it? What they did is this. They had a group of people called the Gnostics, a group of black people. They had wrote written scriptures that was being colonized by Greece and taken over by Rome. But the original Gnostics were still around. Although the Greeks, the Romans had in their hand ancient scriptures of the Gnostic teachings that these Gnostic black people that were still around still had. So they took these particular people's teaching, changed it around and made it into a domination stuff, whereas instead of the Christ be being the people that live on the earth can go to their Christ level, you become worshiping a dog on Christ. And instead of you being God, you being the, the subject of a, of a God that's supposed to rule over you and supposed to be your master that is actually your slave master. So, they had this religion that was a political tool to for, for world domination with Rome. They needed this particular religion Although it was the original one, was the original, that was the original Jesus Christ, an original Christianity that it has nothing to do with the Christianity that you worship now. Although your scriptures is fragments of those. You can still get stuff out of the Bible. But what they did was, they had changed it to a religion that in actuality they can dominate the world with. Then that's where your popes and stuff popped up. But they had one problem. The people who was the original writers of those religions were still around and they had to kill them off. So they stole another people religion called the Gnostics and killed them off. Killed them off. Now why did they kill them off? Because the Gnostics talk about another history that's different. In the original Christianity, the God that the people worshipped and the people prayed to that is a jealous God that they talk about in the Bible. I am a jealous God. I actually have no God before me. Which was called the supreme being was the devil. There was an entity that was created in heaven. He was a subordinate being. Which means he came later after the original God had. You had the original God. You had the, first you had the original great mother. Triple blackness of space. And from her. She gave birth to her own outward projection, which was her son, which is like her clitoris. <coughs> and from that, the son created seven other planetary systems, the Pleiades. The original son was Sirius that came from the great mother Newton. One of the sisters in the other planetary system went off and had a child by herself. And because the child was imbalanced with, without the, with, with the two energies, male and female, basically, which is the masculine half of the feminine, because fem there's no such thing as a man. There's no such thing as male, period. Check. Get that shit out your head. Check. <laughs> Check. That's right. First of all, there's no such thing as male. The spirit is feminine. But what about the masculine? The masculine is nothing but the aggressive half of the feminine nature. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. No such thing as male. That's what got you all fucked up. A man is a woman. This ain't got shit to do with homosexuality. A man is a woman. A man is a woman that is a what is what, what is a manifested female. Which means that you're all born female. In the last months of your life, your penis grows into your, your clitoris grows into a 
Filipinos. But the last three, up until the last three months of life, you female. Yeah. But, the, but, but so the woman, there's a, there's, there's, there's a dominant, there's, what is, let's see how this, is, this goes. There is a woman, there is a woman positive and a woman negative. Not talking about good and evil. The woman negative is the most powerful. ACDC, she, she sucks in the energy. All energy from, from so so the original female, which is the woman that you see now, she sucks in the energy. From her, all power is given. You see what I'm saying? That's why when a nigga, you, a nigga say, I, I, I'm really tearing your ass up. You say, okay, you got it. As soon as he busts that nut, you got his ass. As long as you stay lit, lubricated by staying on, staying turned on all night, you can go all night. He can't do it. That's because you you sucking in. But he's a manifested woman because he sticks out. Mm. See what I'm saying? This is the high realm of what we're talking about here. So she goes off and has a child without her other aggressive half of the feminine nature. Because there's no such thing as masculine, period. That's why if you study the goddess, you'll see goddesses that have babies, but you'll see goddesses that kill people. Warrior goddesses. You never see a god that have a baby. You just see warrior goddess. That's called a triple goddess. The soul is spiritual, period. The, 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 the spirit is, the spirit and the soul is female, period, feminine. The great mother, because it all comes with the same feminine essence. The triple blackness of space, the womb of the universe. And if it's all one, you're still talking about the feminine essence. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They say when they, they say now that they have done studies, they cut off on a male and the inside of his organs is the same material that's made up of the walls of the womb and the vagina inside of a male's body. When they cut the flesh open, the inside of that same organs and stuff all through his guts and shit is the same stuff that's inside of the vagina and the womb and all that. You see what I'm saying? There's just two types of females. There's the female, uh, there's the female dominant, no, no, there's the female negative and the female positive. A manifested female and what is called a suppressed female, which the suppressed female or the, or the, or the negative female is the most powerful. Because from the nothing you get the absolute. The absolute is 100 degree of what it can be. And the only way it can go even more is to go back to the original stage. You understand what I'm coming from here? Now, going back to this, this particular being had a son, had a son by herself, and he was an auto, but he was not all the way created. So as a result, he came down and looked up and said, he, he, he came down and created the physical earth. Created the physical earth. You got any more over here, Trent? He created the physical earth. After he created the physical earth and he created a physical body, he said, I am God and I shall have no God before me. But his mother said, a doll of broth, which is his name, a doll of broth. She said, don't lie, there is a God before you, and he lives on earth. So what had happened was this. After he created this, his own creation, him and some of his angels, and they created their own creation, which is the physical earth. What happened was, is she tricked him, and she tricked him and told him, say, that particular man that you created, he can't, he's not upright. Why don't you go and breathe your air in him and your essence into him and, and make him stand up? So when the particular entity breathes his essence and she snuck up behind him, and because he didn't stay around in the womb long enough to get totally created into the original God, the little bit of essence that he needed to be the total God, she blew through him and we got it. So we became the original creator, and he's jealous of us because this particular God got less than what we had. <coughs> so he said, I must suppress them and threw us out of the Garden of Eden. Because when we came and he said, don't eat from the tree of life, which means don't raise your kundalini. And the serpent came and raised the kundalini, which is the spiritual kundalini, from the tree of life, our third eye opened and we could see. And we were more advanced than the God who created us. So as a result, he threw us out by, by taking us and putting us more into gross matter. But we still have the original seed in us. You getting this? Yes, yes. Now, this is what you got to understand on how what kind of God are you. Is there a God above you? No, there isn't. 
Let me explain this to you. The original seed that this sister Sophia blew into the male through the subordinate creation, a dollar brought, and we got the seed that he didn't um, hang around long enough to get because he was not all the way formed. We got the original juice. In order for her to get that seed, the original creator in heaven broke itself up into small pieces and came through her, through the subordinate creator, through us. And each one of us have a, a, a crystal of the original creator in us, called the third eye. <laughs> so if the original creator in the world in the universe broke itself up into miniature crystals and put inside of us, then that also makes us the original creator. We're the original gods. You see. So this God comes and say, I am a jealous God. And he sets over organized religion and when you worship him, you give him power. And that's what these churches are. To keep you from tapping into the divine God power yourself. You worship in a God that is a subordinate being from the original God, because the original God is now down here inside of you. You get it? Yes, sir. So the God that you worship is the enemy. Do you understand? He's a subordinate being. So he influenced organized religion to keep you in slavery, worshiping him and calling yourself a wretch. And as long as you believe in a God over yourself, you can never tap into the original essence of who you are or form of the original creator. Yeah. If I take a glass of water and go to the ocean and take the glass of water and dip it in the ocean, is not the content <laughs> in the glass the same as the content in the ocean? All right, if the original creator is, where, is known as the ocean and a part of that original creator is in you, aren't you the same shit? Yeah. Yeah. The problem is this Adalabra created the physical, and when he created the physical, you got trapped and started thinking that this physical body is yourself, and it's not yourself. You are somewhere else projecting outwardly. You understand where I'm coming from here? Yeah. I want to read something to you here. I want to read something to you. I'm going to read a couple of things to you, but I'm look at this. Y'all all right? Yeah. All right. It's going to be a hell of a tape, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, Listen to this. The fall in the degeneration of the most ancient people and the dismemberment of the divine man. The fall in the degeneration of the most ancient people and the dismemberment of the divine man. Hold on a minute. Let me do something. I've been sweating up here all day. Let me do something right now. Uh, let me take me some vitamin C. That way you don't catch a cold. I ain't had a cold since 89 with vitamin C. You see what I'm saying? Take a couple of these, and you don't catch no cold whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? I've been sweating, you know, up here and stuff, you know. So take a little bit of this. Now, y'all all right? Yeah. OK. Let's do it. All right. Let's deal with this. As the human race became more and more addicted to the world and senses are and senses and appearances, the tree of knowledge, the inner celestial vision of their world and the divine body with its human body, human divine soul faded. Let me go back to that again. Listen to this. As the human race became more and more addicted to the principles, the physical world and this physical body, and the senses of appearances, the inner celestial vision of their, uh, of their world as the divine body with its divine human soul faded. The loss of this inner vision is a kind of spiritual amnesia that can be said to have led back to the dismemberment or the dismembering of the large body in the, in the, in the merely natural consciousness of mankind, Eden. Now, you got locked in, hit in the fell and fall and thinking that the physical world is you. It was just a transition stage of a fall, and now you coming out, you want everything back physical, but your spirit won't give it to you 
That's why nothing can't work for you. Because your spirit's saying, no, I want out of this. I want to be God again. You just want to be man again. See what I'm saying? And it wants to be God again. You understand where I'm coming from? Let's go through some things right now to understand something. A.E. Waits, Holy Kabbalah. A.E. Waits, Holy Kabbalah. I want to read something here on the Messiah. <coughs> here. So you, can, so you can understand something here. Listen to this. Listen. A new heart I will give you. And a new spirit I will put within you. And again, it shall come to pass that I will pour all my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Mm -hmm. You've heard that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. In the Bible. What chapter is that in the Bible? That's uh, Joel 2, 28. So that's Jude, Joel chapter 2, 28. Now, this is what it says here. This is what it says here. Listen to this. It says, And the intruders shall be exterminated, at the time when this shall be accomplished. Now, what is an intruder? An intruder is a person that is an invader that wasn't there in the original time, that somehow got created through time, that's not of the original people, that's now intruding, that's mixed up in your stuff. You get that? And the intruders shall be exterminated in the time when this is accomplished, which is said in the old tradition. This is the period Referable to the text in Genesis when they say Adam and Eve are naked and ashamed. They're talking mm -hmm. about the white people when the, when the veil is pulled from their eyes, they will be naked and ashamed. For this reason, the intruders bring luxury and the disappear and 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 the and they and it says they and, and when they disappear, all leading towards in. Um, 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 excuse me. All leading towards in, in, in continuance will vanish likewise. Now listen to this. What I'm saying is this. What this means is this. It says that the intruders are caused, are, are the cause of luxury. So what happened is this here. These intruders are now come. They are purely physical beings. Materialistic. And they cause luxury. The reason why you can't get on is because you too much dream about Lexus, radio, TVs, furs, shoes, coats, hats, and all that shit. So you don't understand one thing. Listen, you go to these nice malls out here, right? If you look at these malls, 2,000 years ago, with the nice columns and the granite, those would be temples that you would worship in. You don't understand, the white man has studied energy. He understands about sacred geometry and architecture. So he does this. He will build an Egyptian, he would build the same, he would build a mall on the same type of, of sacred architecture that you would have a temple in 2,000 years ago. He understands with sacred architecture when you enter into those particular sacred architectures. Mm. He understands winter solstice, summer solstice, spring equinox, sun, um, summer equinox, fall equinox, right? Mm. Summer solstice, winter solstice, spring equinox, fall equinox. He understands the zodiacal house. So therefore, he does rituals at that time and call them sales. And then you can't understand, based on spiritual energy, when you go up in there with a damn credit card and be poor as shit and overmatch the thing, and you don't know what the hell happened. You didn't understand that that's a spell they got you under when you go up in there. That's where they put these sails on. Mm -hmm. And the architecture is there to trap you. True. It's some powerful stuff. You ever go in the mall, conscious as I am. I go up in the mall, I say, man, this is some badass stuff. <laughs> and for a minute I forget, I lose it. <laughs> you understand? I mean, because they got all the luxury in the world in there, the most beautiful things in the world. You see? And they put this stuff in there to keep you trapped. Okay? Yeah. Now, let's go on. So the intruders cause luxury. So in the white, when they say Jesus ran the money changers from the temple, 
That means your Christ, when you come up, you're going to run the white man who is the money changers, the world financiers. Or from around your ass, because this is the temple. What is the temple of God? Who is the master mason? The master mason is built on the master who built King Solomon's temple. Who is the master mason? The only person that can have a temple is a woman. She has the physical body. This is the temple. So the master mason is the female. So how many masons up in here? You the master mason. The master mason is the female. Now how many men this masons up in here? Now, don't front, because you're going to have to goddamn challenge me on this shit. You, that, you Prince Hall, right? Okay, cool. I'm not, this is not, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not throwing off on you. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. My brother's 33rd degree. I went through part of Prince Hall and also went through Dr. Ben's Masonic system. Prince Hall is nothing but a social organization. That's all it is. Drinking liquor, driving cab, <laughs> and singing Negro spirituals. It's got nothing to do with no ancient mystery system. So any nigga up here talking about I'm a mason and I know some shit, he's a damn liar. <laughs> if he does know some stuff, if he does know some stuff, he knows it based on him doing some outside study other than doggone the Duncan ritual complete. Standing on the square boy is that you don't know what it is. That you see what I'm saying, that they don't know what it is. My granddaddy was a doggone 30, 30 degree, and he couldn't even read. That nigga, they gave that nigga all his degrees in one Saturday. 